Hi, guys. I feel like I've been already chatting with you for like hours. <laughs> All right, let me set up my, or open up my comments here. Just give me a couple seconds so I can fix that. How's everybody doing? Everybody's excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. My husband's home too from the Hokahei. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. Seriously, he did it. Um, I actually got pictures of his odometer from the morning that he left till when he got back. And you guys can calculate how many miles it is. I already know, but I'm just going to let you guys do it and see what you think about it. It's pretty awesome. All right, so now let me... Where's my comments? I had to fit my, okay, so my mic's on. Everything's good. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. It's beautiful out here today. Yay. Everybody's saying it's hot where you are. Welcome to summer, right? Hi, Renee. All right, so let's go ahead and do an early bird glitter spinner. I've got some, how about some pull, oh, sorry. I got to put you on. Picture and picture. <laughs> that would be good. There we go. I got some pool party stampin' blends, which you guys know, those are my favorite, favorite, favorite. Pool party for outlining, you know, the little images. And then crumb cake is another top favorite of mine, but I got an extra pack, so I'm gonna give that away today. And let me get my iPad over here. We'll give some people some time to roll in. I got a I got a little dilemma that I got answered by one of my glitter queens, one of my team members last week, and I want to share that with you because in case it, you happen to have this happen to you, you guys will know what happened, all right? Hi, Nicole. So sorry to hear that. Hope you're over it quick. Uh-oh, somebody's sick or something, Nicole? Or Irene? What is going on? Irene is in the house today. She's my moderator. Everybody give her an applause. Yay. Thank you, Irene. Um, Teresa is watching her littles, but she's going to be in and out, I think. And then Sharon's here. Hi, Sharon. She's not quite a moderator, but I can add you, Sharon, if you want. Just let me know, all right? I can have an unlimited amount of moderators. So the moderators, are their jobs are to keep our comments and um, chat room clear of trolls and spam and all that stuff. So they're doing a great job keeping us nice so we can chat and feel like comfortable here without, you know, pornographic sites coming up and, you know, all that kind of garbage. All right, let me see here. We got to do the drum roll. All right. Let me spin the comments. Now this is for the Early Bird Glitter Spinner. We're going to do for the Pool Party Stampin' Blends. You get the combo, the light and the dark, all right? Right here. Sharon! <laughs> Sharon's here! Sharon, Sharon. All right, Sharon, that was not, you guys know, I do everything live here, so it's not like I planned that, but Sharon won on giving an applause. <laughs> and Sharon's a glitter queen, so I will get your Stampin' Blends sent out, but you know what, she's coming to my retreat next month too, so yay. All right, so Sharon is the big winner, yay. Let me give you an applause. Woohoo! Yay, Sharon! All right, look, my, my pool party matches kind of, kind of, it does, huh? Maybe more Costa Cabana. Anyway, Squirrel got sidetracked. All right, so you're getting the pool party blends. And I will get those sent out to you tomorrow morning, girl. Yay! And thank you for helping out, Teresa. And if you want to be added, Sharon, I don't know if you missed my introduction here but if you want to be added as a moderator just let me know you all you have to have is a youtube channel so because i have to add you through my back door so all right just let me know and then i'll add you and then you're in then you can block all the trolley trolls <laughs> right all right all right happy wednesday everybody so 
Listen, Richard made it home on Sunday night. He actually crossed the finish line on Saturday, which was two weeks. And this is his odometer reading. Now, you guys got to do a little calculating. I kind of added it up or subtracted it. I need to see which one it is. Okay, I think this is the first one. Wait, I got to... Let me see. I think that's the first one. Is it? Yes. Okay, so can you guys see that? It's... 68001, that's his day when he left. That's what his odometer read, right? So then he took another picture of when he got home, and this is what the odometer said when he got home after being away on the Hokkei. Now, mind you, he rode out to South Dakota, did the Hokkei for 14 days, and then he had a ride home. So here is the final odometer reading which is 81967. So I think, do the calculations for me, people. Tell me what the number is because it's freaking huge. Now, mind you, being sleep deprived, not eating very good, keeping up on two wheels, and then reading a map that's very confusing for this female right here. Let me tell you, he sent me a picture of the map that they get. Holy moly, I'm like, I can't even understand it. And I'm like, not even, you know, sleep deprived and, you know, starving, kind of, sort of. And I can have a hard time, and I have a hard time understanding the map. So, it's just really amazing. I, I want to say it's just shy of 14,000 miles, right? Isn't that awesome? 14,000 miles. So, that's like over... Well, that's probably just shy of a thousand miles a day, but that was including the, the ride home from South Dakota and the ride out there too. So isn't that crazy? So we did have, um, two people died on the Hokahe this year, which is the most it's ever been. And then we have one person, I guess, is paralyzed and is in the hospital. So from an accident on the Hokahe. And it was funny because our friend Glenn, he was texting me the whole time, you know, because he was like, man, I'm telling you, this ride is giving me diarrhea, the shakes, and high blood pressure. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Well, you know, he's a good friend, and he rides with Richard a lot. So, and I know he's stressed out for Richard, you know, when he takes a wrong turn or whatever, because Glenn gets in the map, and he, like, follows everybody, like, to the T, he takes notes and like what roads to turn on. So Glenn doesn't actually have the map, but he's following along with all the other riders. So Glenn was just like stressing out. He's like, I can't even leave to go to the store because I got diarrhea. I'm so such a nervous wreck. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Glenn. So, but yeah, Richard made it home. He's home and he had his um, massage on Monday. I think it was about an hour and a half massage Monday night. And then we actually went and went and picked up our half a cow. Let me show you pictures of that. We went and got a half a cow. We actually had to order it like six months in advance. So, and of course, when Richard's on the Hokahe, he gets the call and says, hey, your cow is ready to come pick it up. So we're like, uh, I'm kind of like on a motorcycle thing here. So I ended up sending the check in and then we ended up going to pick it up on Monday. So we got a whole deep freezer full of beautiful meat. Oh my gosh. And of course we're having steak tonight. So I, when we went and picked up the, the cow, you know, I was like, Hey, could you throw in some extra ribeye in there? <laughs> and it was like, you know, you say that everybody says that. It's funny. I guess ribeyes are pretty, pretty popular. So yeah, so he's already went back to work today. It was his first day back. So he had Monday and, or Monday and Tuesday off. And then Sunday he came in and he slept pretty much all the day. But then um, Monday he went for his massage. And then Tuesday he just putzed around, you know. So he's he's back. I think he's back kind of back to normal. I mean, I'm sure he could sleep a little bit more. But I mean, that was one heck of a ride. Why do you buy... Why buy our cows... We, oh, we buy our cows too. I know. Well, ex especially now with the expense of how meat is now at the, at the stores, you know. 
and getting a cow from the butcher is so much better because it's like fresh and we know what's in it, right? Um, nothing better than homegrown cows to put in your freezer. I agree, but it wasn't cheap, but it was way cheaper than the regular store, you know? So, and we got a pig coming too. We got a, a guy that's raising our pig. We, he, we ended up getting to get a baby pig and he's raising it and feeding it. And then we're going to go pick it up. But I think that's going to be in a couple months. that will be good because then we can eat some of this cow down so we can have space. Because I think we have a little bit of space here in the downstairs refrigerator, but not a lot. All right, so let's go ahead and do some weekly updates. Not very many this week. Let me take this comment off here. Hello, Donna. Nice to see you here today. We get a quarter and it's from my husband's cousin. Oh, that's awesome, Renee. And you know what? This place, we went to a new place this time and it was so awesome. They, because we have um, one of those shrinky dinky machines, you know, <laughs> it's not the shrinky dinky machine, but it's one of those machines where you put it in, it goes and it like seals it up. So it keeps the stuff fresh. What is that called? A food saver, maybe? Um, anyway, so we were planning on doing that when we got our cow and they had already done it for us. So I was like, woo, woo. yeah, that was awesome. Big, humongous time saver for us to do it. So, and then it's really nice and labeled. Did you guys see the picture on how nice it's labeled and everything? It's like, seriously, it looks like it comes from the store. Look at it. It's got like the label on it. It says what it is, the date. It's so nice. I love it. So we're definitely using that butcher again. Most definitely. We like it. So, but everything was like that. Very, very good. All right. So, if you're new to the Glitter Pit, welcome to the Glitter Pit. You want to check out my blog, which is right over here, dawnstampingthoughts.net. And go to my blog tomorrow. We're going to give a giveaway on my website. And you have all week to leave a comment on that blog post, which is two for Thursday. We have two videos, the live replay, which is what you're on right now. And then I also filmed a shorter condensed version that will be on my website starting tomorrow. So if you want, you know, if you don't want to listen to all the chit chat, I get it. It's not for you. It's all right. There's no judging. <laughs> That's why I make this, the shorter condensed version. So both of those videos will be posted tomorrow on my website and leave a comment on that blog post. And I'm going to show you the two stamp sets I'm going to give away here in just a second. But you want to sign up for my newsletter. This goes out every Wednesday at 2.30. Everybody got it. I'm assuming. Raise your hand. Yay. So you're going to text with your cell phone one glitter to 22828. And then also you're going to, it's going to, you're going to hit send and then it's going to pop back and it's going to ask you for your email address. Then you're going to type in your email address and then hit send and then you're all set. It should say you're confirmed or your email address is entered. And then also this is only for your cell phone providers that are in the U.S. That's the only, um, I guess, stipulation so if you if you live outside the u.s and you want to sign up for my newsletter you got to email me and i'll add you all right so but other than that you guys can do it really super simply from your cell phone really easy one glitter is in the tax and then the phone number is 22828 and then you hit send so really super easy all right and then celebration is going on. I have one update with the celebration items, the envelopes and the cards. Let me show you here where are those at. They are the pool party and the soft sea foam right here. These have been sold out. These are on page eight right here. Let me just say sold out. These right here on page eight. So you get an assortment of the note cards and the envelopes. This was a free item. They're no longer available and they're not getting any more in. So you guys know that all the celebration items are while supplies last. So that's the first one that sold out. Now this is going until the end of August, which is my anniversary with my husband. August 31st is my, what is it? I think it's my 34th wedding anniversary. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so the celebration is going until August 31st 
or while supplies last, okay? And in this catalog, this is the catalog that you get to pick for every $50 increment that you spend, you get to pick something for free out of this mini catalog. It's really, really awesome, okay? And then this is the new tutorials, which I started sending out this month for July. Very cute, we're using brand new holiday catalog items. So cute. So you guys should be looking for that in your email box. I also just sent out the paper pumpkin subscribers, that email, so you guys got that. Please check your spam or your junk folder for that email, all right? All right, here are the two stamp sets. Oh wait, we gotta do the winners from last week. Hold on. We got the winners from last week for the glitter giveaway. I just got to find it here. Hold it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. So this is the winner from last week. Well, the two winners. I got one back. I'm just waiting to hear back from the other winner. Let me do the drum roll. I'm always cautious about hitting that button because I don't want to, I don't want to hit the fax machine. <laughs> Teresa and Terry. Woo woo. Teresa. Terry, you guys won the glitter giveaway from last week. This is from the Two for Thursday blog post from July 6th. Or actually, it was posted on July 7th, but we were live here in this on the 6th. So, Teresa and Terry, all you have to do... Well, I've already got your address. I'm just confirming that I have the right address. Terry has wrote me back, said I have the right address, so I'm waiting on you, Teresa. Email me your address to confirm that I have it right. I've already emailed you, so just check your email box, all right? And then respond back if I have it correctly. And if not, if you've moved, let me know, okay? Because let me tell you, shipping is getting to be really, 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 really crazy. So congratulations, everybody. Woo woo, congratulations, yay! Teresa and Terry were winners from last week's glitter giveaway. All right. So here's my email address in case you need to get a hold of me. Contact me about anything if you have an order or something, whatever. I mean, if you have an order that you ordered through me as your demonstrator, definitely contact me. But don't contact me if you ordered it through another demonstrator because I can't fix that. This is only ordering it through myself, all right? So it's dawn at the glitter pit dot com. Sing it, everybody. <laughs> so you can contact me there, all right? All right, so here are the two new stamp sets. They're not new. They're for my personal collection. Gently used from yours truly. Spooktacular Bash and Wonderfully Wicked. These are Halloween stamp sets and they're red rubber. Very, very cute for the season that's going to be approaching like in lickety split time, right? Halloween will be here before we know it. All right, so all you have to do is leave a comment over on my website starting tomorrow, dawnstampingthoughts.net. Leave a comment on the blog post where you're going to see the card that we're going to make today. Well, it's actually going to be a different color, but leave a comment over on the two for Thursday blog post. It usually goes live about seven o'clock in the morning. Leave a comment and your name will be entered to win one of these two stamp sets. Super easy. No purchase necessary. Just leave a comment. Tell me what you love, what you don't love, what's happening in your life, whatever you want. All right. Yay. All right. Now let me share a little tip here because last week in our newsletter, you guys that got it, if you guys looked at it, you've seen that it was a watercoloring project. I got the new aqua painters. I think they are. No, water painter. Sorry. These are really awesome. So you'll know that previously in our past catalogs, we used to have the aqua painters and there was two in our catalog. Now there's three and I wanted to use this one, which you can tell I did end up using it, but I couldn't get it to open. So if you guys got these new water painters, just know there's a trick to opening it up to add the water on the inside of your barrel for the, the water painter. The water goes down in here and then you have the brush. So then the idea is that you squeeze the water barrel, the water comes out to the tip and then it gets the brush wet. And then you can do that watercoloring technique that we shared last week in the newsletter. 
is so pretty. So these aqua painters don't open up clockwise. They open up counterclockwise. And for all my glitter queens that are here, hold on. <laughs> of course, now it's not good. There we go. So, yeah, it opens up clockwise, not counterclockwise, right? It opens up like this. I could not get that to open, and Richard wasn't here at the time. So I was like, yeah, this is like opening it up backwards. Just if you can't do it one way, go the other way. And then it opens up. Okay? So then you're just going to put tap water in there. Just put a little bit of, you know, fountain water or whatever in there. Nothing special. I mean, I've even done it with bleach and stuff. See, I want to keep going on that way, but you can't. And, you know, I do remember that, but Sharon Honeycutt, one of my glitter queens, told me that. I was like, I got to share that with everybody. Because if you guys got the tutorial last week and you wanted to do that, you probably got these painters and you're probably thinking, how in the world do you open them? That's how. But it comes in this really nice case, too. Do you see that? I'm trying to think where this... There it is right there. So it's really nice. Hold on. All right. So, yeah, those, you get three of them. So that was my little tip that I wanted to share with you guys before we got any further. We're not doing any watercoloring today, but just FYI, okay? This is this week's card sketch number 239. Next week will be 240. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. 240. That's like four and a half years of doing card sketches with you guys. Do you love it? I know I love doing the card sketches. Actually, my card that we're making today is from a card sketch. Let me show you here. This is the sample that I sent out in the newsletter today. This design is actually from card sketch, I think, 229. I have it on my blog. But the card sketch is the inspiration of the card that we're going to make today. Okay, so you can go to that link and click all that out. But this is this week's card sketch, 239. And I used the all wrapped up or something. Is it all wrapped up with the little raccoon? And then I cut out the birdie and put him on his hand. He's so cute. And then I put rhinestones on the snowflakes. So cute. So the idea with the card sketches is I make the template up in just like a neutral color. And then I do my twist on it. And then you guys do your twist on it with whatever you guys have in your studios, you know. So it's a really great idea on how to stamp a really cute card. If you're kind of stumped on what you want to stamp, you just need a quick birthday card. You can take any design. And remember, you can turn it, which is also very clever. You can make it look totally different. And you can change the shape. You know, I always usually use a circle, but... Um, especially for the template, but you could use an oval or a square, whatever, you know. So there's this week's card sketch, and card sketches are posted every Monday on my website. Every Monday you'll get a new card sketch. And the gallery is activated, so if you want to check out the past 238 card sketches, all that is over there on my Monday blog post. I even have a link to that, all right? All right, so let's give some kudos to Ellen Cobble. I do have some happy mail for the end of the hour, too, but I'm going to start stamping. You guys ready? Did you guys print out the, the PDF? The PDF is listed down below in the description box. Also in the newsletter, if you got it, it's also listed there. But you only need like three pieces and a basic card. So now this is the card that inspired it all. So Ellen sent me this card. So cute. So look at this. So it's a uh, daffodils. And we have the daffodil dies, which are right here. These are the daffodil dies. You get all those dies. And you can cut out multiple daffodils too. But we're using the Sending Smiles die in stamp set. But this was her card that got me all excited about it. So it opens up and it forms a flower vase that's 3D, it pops up. Can you see how it sits up like that? Isn't that cute? <laughs> so excited about learning how to do this card, I love it. 
and the daffodils are perfect. But I wanted to do something different to give you another idea, all right? So that was Ellen's card that she sent me that started all of this. And then this was my very first one. Now, you might remember this one. This is from the daffodil. This was a celebration designer paper. But I think this was a card sketch, too. But I used it for my first one. I wanted to see how I did it. And I just added the one daffodil to the vase. So it did work. I was really impressed with myself. <laughs> so cute. So then I thought, well, I'm going to make it with the Sending Smiles. Now, this is that stamp set. You guys know we all love this stamp set and dies. A lot of you probably already have it. Let me pop this stuff out of here. So um, this stamp set was brand new with the annual catalog. The dies, right? And then cute sending smile stamp set. Love it. All right, so here's my sample. This is the Tahitian Tide version. Remember, this is card sketch 229, I believe. And then you open it, and it's got the little vase of flowers there. So cute. We're going to make one with the sweet sorbet. So I've already done the card. I can give you the measurements if you want for the front of the card. Just a quick, you know, go through the measurements. But the link to the card sketch will be posted on my blog post tomorrow, okay? So let me go ahead and get my sweet sorbet card out. And then I got all my flowers. Now, I'm not going to use all these flowers, but, you know, I kind of was addicted to making these vases. So I got, like, all these flowers stamped and cut out. So we're just going to have fun putting it together. Okay, so... If you want the measurements for the front here, this piece is cut at, let me get my ruler. Let me see. Okay, so the designer paper is cut at about two inches by four and a quarter. Then another little strip is cut at a half inch by four and a quarter. And then the big rectangle, square, whatever here is cut at three and three quarter by two and three quarter okay and then it's just a matter of decorating it so I cut out the sending and then I added a card to say hello and then the background is the sweet sorbet with the glitter with the glitter paper okay so now the card is just your vertical card that's what you're going to use for this type of card so you can turn any card that goes in this landscape. This isn't landscape though, is it? I think this is portrait. Landscape is like horizontal. So you want it to go like this. Okay, so any card that's empty, go grab it. We're going to make it. Okay, so you're going to need three pieces for the mechanism. The designer paper is cut at two and a quarter by five. And this is the sweet sorbet. We're going to score that and cut it. And then two pieces of basic white. This one is cut at three-fourths by three and seven-eighths. We're going to score that. And then a little tiny piece cut at a half inch by two. That's it. That's the mechanism that's going to make your vase right here. Wait, let me show you. That's going to make your vase. And then, of course, you're going to have to cut out some flowers. So I have, the, I'll, I'll explain exactly what I'm going to do with my flowers because there is a, a method to my madness. But um, I'll show you all that when we get there, all right? So now this piece is optional. Now, since my card base is the basic white, like this one here, right? So there's no um, layer over here. So now if this card was like, say, Ellen's, I'm just explaining this because you don't need this piece if you have like a piece of basic white. But I'm going to use it today to show you. So like Ellen's card, she put the insert for signing and stuff. Even though her card base was white, she really didn't have to. But and that's the way I'm going to do it today with you guys. But on my Tahitian Tide one, I didn't. And it doesn't matter. But it does matter if you want to put it in. Because you want to put your insert in before you put your mechanism and stuff together. But if you're not, then you just go ahead and do it like normal. Okay? 
All right, so these pieces, let me see here. This sweet sorbet is cut at four by five and a quarter. And then basic white is cut at five by three and three fourths. Okay. So, and then I'm going to give this card away today in the, in the, at the end of the hour. Okay. So you want to stay tuned for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this in. But like I said, if you're using a white card base, you don't have to. So we're just going to put our layer together and then I'm going to put this on the inside of the card to have that done. I got a brand new stamp and seal, even the new cartridge. Pretty snazzy, huh? I reuse them so much and then they get all nasty. Look. Look how gumped up this one is. It's disgusting. I mean, it still works. It's just, I gotta look professional. <laughs> yeah. I gotta look professional. I know, you guys know me. You guys love me the way I am. I know. All right, so then you just add that in there before we start putting the card together, all right? So just remember that. Because once you put the mechanism in, it's going to be hard to put this layer inside. Trust me. All right, let's get our trimmer. Are you guys ready? These, these, these are easy pieces to cut, even if you want to just make a template. Okay? All right, so this is your two and a quarter by five. We're going to double check, right? So then you're going to score this at on the two and a quarter inch side across the top. We're going to score this at three-fourths. Now remember, with designer paper, you don't want to press too hard because it could rip. Then slide it down to one and a half. So three-fourths and one and a half. Then you're going to turn it on the five-inch side and score this at one inch on both ends. So far, so good, right? I love it when you guys email me your samples that you make with the Glitter Pit Live and you're like so impressed with yourself. I told you, you guys could do it. <laughs> Seriously. You know what it is with moving cards and pop-up and sliding cards and all that? You just got to go slow, right? Especially for the first one. It's just like when you're starting a new job, you know, you got to... You got to learn the mechanism. You got to learn the technique. And then after you do your first one, then you're like a pro. Then you can just whip them out. So it's just like anything new. You just want to slow down and just, you know, take it easy. And it's just paper. So if you mess up, just throw it away and start over. Right? And these are little pieces. So, all right. So then we're going to take your, okay, so you guys got that, right? So two and a quarter by five, you're going to score it at, on the two and a quarter inch side at three quarter or three fourths and then one and a half. Then turn it on the five inch side and score it at one inch on both ends. That's it. Now on the three fourths by three and seven eighths, we're going to score this at three eighths. And that's the three eighths is the eighth mark right before the half. And I'm using it over here on the right hand side. So three eighths is the eighth mark right before the half. Score that. And that's it. Just one end. Okay. And then your half inch by two, we're not doing anything with except for putting tear and tape on. All right. So you're going to need tear and tape and your take your pick tool and scissors. I got my snips right here. All right, so let's cut this piece. This is the vase part. So I'm just going to fold the ends. I find you don't even really need to fold the middle. So on one end, we're going to cut on the score line up to that one inch. You're going to cut both score lines, right? So you're going to have three tabs. You're going to remove the two outside tabs and keep the center tab attached okay so it's gonna look like this okay now the other side you're gonna do opposite so you're gonna cut on the score line again gotta see that there we go okay so cut on the score line and then this one we're gonna remove 
the center, the center tab. Okay, so it looks kind of like an, um, a plug, kind of, right? So these two are left, and then these two are cut out. So it should look like this. Okay. Now we're going to take our tear and tape. Now with my vase, I'm going to put my flowers facing out. So this is going to be my vase, this part right here. This part that forms the vase right here. So whatever side you want facing out, you're going to flip over. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit here. Oh, my phone, my thing is tipping a little bit. All right, these are no good. All right, so now we're going to take this arm. This is going to be the mechanism arm that's going to move your vase. Okay, so we're going to put our tear and tape on this tab right here at the end. I'm going to put two strips. And then I seen, I think it was um, Judy or Jane. Let me see if it's on my notes here. Jane. Jane Dooley's video. Her video is very helpful for me to learn how to do this. So thank you, Jane. I don't know how I found her, but I found her. So put your tear and tape on one end, the single tab. And then this tab right here, remember we scored that at three eighths, that's gonna be on the right hand side. So this end down here without the score line is gonna get attached to this arm or this little tab. Okay. Then we're gonna put some adhesive, some tear and tape on here. Okay, so far so good, right? Okay, now we're gonna take our card. I'm telling you, this is so easy. You're gonna be thinking, oh my goodness, that was so easy. <laughs> oh wait, we gotta put some adhesive on our half inch by two. Let me go ahead and do that. So you're gonna put adhesive on both ends of your half inch by two. And this is gonna be the stopper for the vase. Okay, so let's just get that ready to go on here in a second. Peel off the backing with my pokey thing on my take your pick. All right, so that's ready. Now we're going to take the card. We're going to put our sticky part. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to remove that backing. All right, so now this is where... You want to take your sticky part and put it right up to that score line. Can you see it? Hold on. Can you see that? Yeah, it's right up on that score line. You want to be able to fold your card, so tuck it right up in there. But you want to make sure that your vase part down here is just above the bottom of the card. You want it inside your card, right? Okay, so once everything's lined up, this is good, this is good. All I'm saying is you don't want it crooked and you don't want it sticking out of your card like this, sorry. You want it straight. So put it straight like that, okay? And then you can close the card. This is why you want this piece on there if you're going to add it. Put it right up in there. Hold on. Move it back a little bit. Okay, right there. Okay. Make sure everything's straight. All right, then close the card. Okay. Press that down on the tear and tape. Then open the card. Okay. Now it should look like this. So it's folded back. See how that's folded back there? That adhesive, right? See, that's why you want that piece added. Because if you were to do that and then add it, see there's like that three-eighths of an inch is into the card. You can't put it on. You know what I mean? But if you're using a basic white piece and you don't need it, like my Tahitian Tide one. See? I don't have it. Because I'm just going to sign here anyway, you know? 
All right, now we're going to fold this over here and we're going to put adhesive on these two tabs with the tear and tape. put two strips on each of the tabs you can use your stamp and seal too I'm sure because it's just the well maybe you should use tear and tape all right I'm gonna peel off the backings so we went and seen Elvis last night have you guys seen the movie yet Elvis I was really kind of disappointed. I mean, let me explain. I mean, the guy that's playing Elvis is freaking awesome. I mean, I love the movie. But I felt like it was too much with the Colonel Parker stuff. I mean, I know it was like his story through his eyes. But, man, I just wanted to see Elvis. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. So now we got our tear and tape on this side. So now we're going to flip it back over. Right? And then we're going to take our stopper that we have the two ends with the tear and tape right here. And we're going to put this, let me pull this up here. We're going to pull, lay that flat and we're going to put this right up at the end. Making sure that tear and tape is not touching the arm or the, the vase. That's why you put the adhesive on the top and the bottom. So this is still able to move. Plus this arm should slide right between this, this tab cut out, which is what we want. Okay. Then you're going to fold this over. This is probably the trickiest part. So remember, you want to keep your tab. It's going to slide in between there. So we're going to fold over the sticky part of the tear and tape. See this where you need like three hands. And then you're going to open up the card, or you're going to close the card. Close the card shut. And then you're going to lay that vase flat. Just like that, and then adhere that down. So hopefully, if you did it right and it didn't stick, which it looks like it's stick, it's stuck there. Hold on. Did it stick to my? It looks like it's stuck to my designer paper. Hold on. Let me rip this up. Let me see where it's stuck. Yeah, right here, a little bit. That's the tricky part. You want it not to stick to any of the tear and tape. Hold on. Let me take this side up too. Easy fix, right? Yeah, I went too far up and the bottom piece caught onto the arm. Okay, yeah, see it's stuck to the arm right here. Okay, let's try this again. Let me take my tear and tape. When you're closing it, just look. I was trying to show you guys on what you wanted to do to keep that in the middle of the arm. But you're not going to be able to see it. So it's just a matter of you knowing what you're looking for when you're doing it. Okay. So the arm, this piece right here. See how it got caught on that right here? It's stuck to my tab and you don't want that i'm just gonna close it up and hopefully we'll do it right this time hold on i'm just gonna take my backing off I'm going to trim this down too with it tearing that. I don't want anything getting caught on that. Let me trim this down here. Yeah, I don't want anything getting caught up onto that arm. So I'm just trimming it where it tore it at. All right, so see how this is? This right here, this arm is going to be in there. I just got to look at it from my view here. It really is. It's not hard. It's just I'm trying to show you guys on live video and it's not going to cooperate. All right. So 
I want to make sure that that is on the arm, right? Make sure that's in there. I'm just checking. <laughs> All right. Close it up. It really isn't hard. All right, let me just make sure before I seal it down. Yeah, that's right. All right, now I can seal it down, I think. Yes. Okay, I did it. Woo-woo! <laughs> All right, so the arm needs to, well, let me see if you can see it in there. See how that arm slides in between those two pieces? Maybe if we cut it a little bit, like notched it out a little bit wider, it might be better. But I didn't find a problem with it before when I did it. So it's just trying to show you guys live and what that looks like. Just know that this is going to be whoever's sample, okay? So then that's going to make your 3D pop-up vase. See that? Yay! All right. Well, now that you've seen that, now what to do, now you guys can do... Now you guys cannot do that, right? <laughs> right. All right, now let's do our flowers. All right, the flowers are pretty easy. Now what I did with mine, with uh, Sending Smiles, is on the die there's like a single, like a single stem, and then there's like a double. So I took two singles, and then I took two double, Right here, there's two doubles. See how that like branches? Oh no, that's a single too. Where's all my doubles? Maybe I didn't bring two doubles over. All right, well, we'll just use two singles and I'll make it into a double, right? Yeah, these are all singles. But look at my doubles here. You can make it into a double. See, it like camp comes off on a branch over here, but we're just gonna make it into a double. We're just gonna fix that. All right, so I'm going to glue the back ones down, like on the background. Just glue those down in the background area. Okay, and then we're going to pop the flowers up. I got a bunch of colors here. I got Fresh Freesia. Polished Pink, Tahitian Tide, um, Sweet Sorbet, and then I have the Starry Sky. Let me grab another little one. I got the Mango Melody for the little one, too. All right, so we're going to use the Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to pop two of the flowers on the back. that and let me see I'm going to put the fresh freesia one over here on the other side now mind you you would do the double stem on the back side but it works no matter what I mean it's just a stem right you're filling it like a vase full of flowers all right and then we put our little one we put a little dimensional on the little flowers I got my mango I'll put over here and then put my polished pink one right here and then of course you can add more flowers too if you want it's totally up to you all right and then we're going to add glue for these stems because these stems are going to be glued to the back side of the vase okay so we're just going to well i'm going to actually glue the flower on first I find that's a little bit easier. So glue the flower on the stem. And then the Tahitian Tied one on this one here. Don't want to go crazy with the glue either because the vase closes flat. That's what this is so great with this card because the vase closes flat for mailing so it's not like a 3d project it's going to be flat so now since this is going to be glued on the 
the back side of the vase, you're going to put the glue on the front. And then stick that right on the, the back of the vase. And you can use any flowers that you want. Like Ellen used the daffodils, which are cute. Okay, I'm going to glue this one over here. Let me put my finger up in there. Isn't it cute? It's like legit flowers in a vase. You don't have to water them or anything. They're like always in bloom. <laughs> so cute. Now remember when you're putting that stem on too, you don't want to move it around because like I said, the vase folds flat and you don't want to have that glue down you know with you moving it around in there so where you put it is where you're going to put it you know what I mean because once you close it you don't want that to seal up and like glue shut let me get a couple more little flowers I'm going to put a couple I'm going to put one right here I think in the center just to make it fuller make it look like a big bouquet of flowers let me get a dimensional Put a little pink one right here. Just like that. Isn't that cute? Then look, it folds flat. Ta-da! <laughs> I love it! All right, and then one more thing that I did do to mine was I took the saying here, love and big hugs, and that is from the Sunding Smile stamp set too. Mm, looking for it love and big hugs right here so I die cut that out and then I'm going to put two mini dimensionals on the back of that and I'm going to put it right across the vase so then when the vase pops up that greeting pops out too it's so cute so I'll put it right in the center there see then it folds flat let me show you again from the side because I love that See how it just folds flat? <laughs> and then look, it pops up. So cute. A vase full of flowers. I love it. And it's so easy. Isn't it? And that's the front. Sending a card to say hello. Love and big hugs. So cute. All right. Let me show you the other ones again. Here's Ellen's. With the daffodil. Now she added a lot of daffodils in there. Look at and all the greenery is so pretty. So really like go crazy with all the flowers. You know. Really make it full. And then my turquoise one. Which is right here. This is my turquoise one. Isn't that cute? I love it. So adorable. So that's the main attraction really is the inside of the card, you know. So there's a couple ideas and the different flowers. So if you guys have different flowers, try your different flowers. It'd be cute. Don't you think? You like it? You love it? You want some more of it? <laughs> All right, let me put my die in my little pocket here. Great, great for a get well card. It sure is a really great idea for a get well. I thought like of Mother's Day. I thought of thinking of you card. That's a really great idea, Kathy. Yay. We'll have to try this card. Awesome. You'll love it, Randy. Really easy. Just make sure at the bot, you know, like where we got hung up when I was putting mine. Just know that that arm slides in between that tab. So you got to make sure that that is moving in there. And then the stopper is what makes the vase stop and form the shape. So cute. I love it. So clever. Very, very cute. I'm trying that tonight. Yay! Go, Lisa! Go, Lisa! You can do it! 
Don't get frustrated. You know, when you're learning something new, like, you know, what happened with mine when I got it stuck to the side, just, it's all right. It's just paper. You know, I feel like I want to stick this down a little bit more. Here, let me glue some on there. Hold on, let me let me lift this up here a little bit. There we go. I don't want it to ooze out. Let me just hold that there for a second here. Hold on. Just hold that. Oh, my fingers are all sticky now. Don't you love that? Sticky, inky fingers. It's the name of this the name of the show, right? When you're a paper crafter anyway. Okay. Very good. Very cute. But I like it that it mail it folds flat for mailing. I love that. And it's cute on the front, too, right? So cute. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. It would be cute as a birthday card with the hippos popping out. It would be cute, like in the little boat or the bathtub or the tub. <laughs> that would be cute. So cute. I didn't have much time to really think more into it because Richard got home and, you know, I'm just lucky, lucky I was actually able to do the flowers because <laughs> I wanted to be with him for the two days that he was off. You're so welcome, Nicole. All right, let's, let me just scroll back here a little bit and then we'll do a glitter giveaway, all right? A uh, good card for someone in the hospital. If they can't have real flowers, this should make them happy. Most definitely, Mary. Most definitely. And it's a little interaction there, too. So when they open it, you know, they'll see it. So cute. All right. Let's go ahead and do a glitter giveaway. Actually, if you guys want the turquoise one or the red one, you guys can take your pick. Either one. I would say with this one, it's not like perfect because it is ripped there a little bit. Can you see that? Maybe I'll just do the turquoise one. I'll give the turquoise one away. I'll keep this one for my sample. How's that? Because this one's good. It's exactly the same. It's just a different color. Unless you want the sorbet one. I mean, you know, let me know. Whatever one you want, all right? All right, and then you can make yourself a template too, just of the three pieces and put it together, kind of like how you know, and then put it with the cards so you'll know how to make it. And then have the PDF there too. All right, let me put my glue away before I roll that off the table. All right, so I have a couple other gifts. Now, whoever wins this, here, let me take this off here. Whoever wins these sequins, adhesive back sequins, these are the artistry blooms. These were my favorite because there's pool party one in there in the orange. Whoever wins this, let me know if I can open these and send them out because with this hard plastic right here, it's going to cost me probably at least $350 to mail that. And if I can open this up and remove this plastic, I can put those in a regular size envelope with the backing and send it for a stamp. So that's a huge saving. So let me know if you're all right with that, if I can do that. And then I have these right here. These are the 2021-23 In Color Jewels. Let me say, they're kind of like jumbled up, but they're all on there. Very pretty colors. And then we got the card, right? Yeah, that's the card. All right, let me go ahead and get my iPad here. We'll do the spinner. My post-it notes. All right. We ready? Let's do the card first. All right. Spinning. Oh, look at all the pretty hearts. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Don't forget to share the video. Sharing is caring. Who is that? 
I want to make this card. Who said that? I can't pronounce your name. It's K E I O M E G A. Okay. Please email me your full name and address. Here, let me get my ad my email address. This is who won the card. So I need your address. Are you new to the glitter pit? Welcome. This is where you're going to email me. Dawn at the glitter pit. Dot com. Email me there your address. Now, this is your physical street address, so I can mail you the card, all right? So, let me know your address and your full name. So, I know this isn't your full name, right? K-E-I-O-M-E-G-A. Yeah. You got the card. Congratulations. Yay. All right, so email me before you get off here. Or when we end the, the live broadcast, email me and I'll send you the card. And if you want the sweet sorbet one, I'll mail you that one instead of the Tahitian Tide. So if you have a choice preference, let me know. Okay? But as of right now, I'll send you the, the turquoise one. All right, and then I'm going to do the In Color Jewels. In Color Jewels. All right, let's do that. Let's spin it. Hold on. Let's open it up here. There we go. Oh, wait. We got to do the spinning. All right. Yay. Okay, who's that? Oh, somebody's congratulating. Debbie! I think I got your address, Debbie. <laughs> yeah, I do. I got your address. All right, so Debbie, you got the jewels here. Yay. Oh, see, that was my worst fear. That is terrible. <laughs> that is just downright despicable. There we go. Yay, Debbie. You got the in-color jewels. Now, whoever wins these, let me know if I can send them to you that way. Well... Let's drum roll it. Hey. Wait, here. Here. Kathy! I got your address, Kathy. Can I take these out of here? These are the adhesive back sequins. Kathy, Kathy. Kathy Swenson. My cousin's last name is Swenson. Okay. Yep. Kathy. Yay, Kathy. Ooh, ooh. Yay. All right. So let me know if I can open these up. Or I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Because that's not, that's like crazy playing that extra $4 or $3 for that set plastic. And I can put all the packages of the sequins in an envelope and send them to you. I'll send you the backing, too, so you know what they are. But I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I think you'll be all right with it, right, Kathy? Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yes, I can get cheaper postage. That way it's worth it to me, all right? Thank you. All right, so don't forget to email me here who won the card. I'll send you this card, and it's K-E-I-O-M-E-G-A. I need your full name and your address. And also, you need to leave live in the U.S. to get the prizes, all right? So these two, I already have their address. So we have Debbie Dunstan and then Kathy Swenson. I got your addresses. Yay. Congratulations. All right, so now what was it that I was... Oh, I was going to show you some pictures of Richard. So when Richard got home from the Hokahe, well, actually, when he finished the... He went across the finish line. This was him here. Hold on, let me take this off here. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Spin it. <laughs> All right, so here's Richard here. And they had a finish line where they had dinner, which Richard got some fish. So look how sunburned he is. His whole face is fried. And it's all like around his, his glasses. Oh, my gosh. 
was so crispy, crispy critters my hubby was. So my um, one of my friends, Janet, her husband rode the Hokahe too, and she snapped that picture of him. So I was so thankful. And then this is him when he rolled into the garage that night. He got home about 10, 30, 11 o'clock on Sunday. So, but yeah, he was so exhausted. Oh my gosh. So even today, he's not able to sit like in the chair, like in the truck. Because when we went and got our cow, you know, our half cow, he, I was driving because he's like, you can drive. I'm not driving. So he, I was driving my truck and he was sitting in the seat and he was sitting sideways because his tailbone hurts so bad. His butt's fine, but it's his tailbone that hurts so bad. So, um, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Let me see if I have any other pictures of it. I showed you guys the odometer. Yeah, I think that was about it. I showed you some pictures that he sent me last time when he was on the road. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, we have a new paper pumpkin, too. It's got sunflowers. I don't think I brought a paper over of it. Oh, and then this is the new kit, the new card kit. It's the Best Remedy card kit. So cute with the little skunk, and it's got, like, ice cream stuff on there. The item number is 160171, and it's an all-inclusive kit. So you get the ink pad, the little stamping block, and then the envelopes and everything. All you need are, like, scissors and adhesive. And you get the exclusive stamp set, which looks like this one here. And you can only get the card kits online at my website, on my online store. So all that's over there too. All the links are listed down below in the description box, as well as on my website tomorrow, all right? Or you can go to my website today too. The website's got everything over there too. How many days did he ride? He rode from the 26th till... Uh, got home on Sunday, which was the 10th, so the 9th. The 26th to the 9th, so two weeks. And he rode, some days it was more than a 1,000 miles a day on his Harley. So he um, his bike is filthy, dirty. He came home and he pulled the plug on his oil, so his oil drained out. Now he's just got to change out the oil, and then he's going to take it to the shop and have his buddy work on it. So, yeah, they're going to be doing a lot of stuff to that bike. It's filthy, dirty, and... Oh, and then um, when he stopped in Utah, I think, I want to say, I want to say Utah was one of the stops for the, um, the checkpoints. He um, had his oil changed, and the guy was checking the clutch and he said that the clutch felt like it was loose so Richard being half asleep and you know hungry and kind of delusional when the guy said that Richard explained to him that he has his clutch go a certain way I don't know nothing about clutches I don't know nothing about how he has it set up but whatever he did he totally jacked it up so then when in the middle of the ride, the clutch went out and he was up in the mountains doing the, oh my gosh, I was a nervous wreck. So um, when he got to the next checkpoint was in Idaho, he ended up getting a new clutch put in. So and it ended up only costing $72 because it was under warranty. But still, I was very thankful that he got a new clutch because then he had to go back up into the mountains and finish the ride, you know, to the finish line. But um, when the guy messed up on the clutch... You know, Richard's on the middle of the Hokahe and he can't like just go in and just, you know, fix it. So he called his mechanic and his mechanic said, you know, do this and this. And then Richard did that. But then the bike wouldn't go above 50 miles an hour. And you can't do the Hokahe going 50 on the mountains and stuff. So he was pretty upset, but he was thankful that he got to the finish line. So, yep. So everything was good. I'm just thankful he's home and safe and sound. Yeah, he wrote it out and wrote it back, Nicole. Isn't that crazy? He didn't trailer it. He wrote it out. So that was like um, 16 hours out there and then 16 hours back. I don't quite know how many miles that is, but it's a lot. I felt like when he came home, 
he ended up taking two naps just coming home from South Dakota in South Dakota. South Dakota is huge. So he ended up stopping twice just to take a little nap because I felt like he was in South Dakota forever riding out, you know, to come home. So, um, yeah, but finally when he hit the Indiana and he came out of Chicago into Indiana, this is the very tip of Indiana, and then hit Michigan, I was so happy. He kind of lost a day fixing the clutch. Yeah, kind of, but you know what happened is that he had to go back because see with the, the Hoka, hey, if you take a wrong turn, you got to go back. And you got to go back the route you went and then take the right turn. So you can't just like, um, let's say you got, you, let's say you take a turn here. Let's say you're going down the road, the map. And the map says to go around the curve here and then take a left right here, right? But instead, you take a right and then you're going this way, right? And then this road takes you up this way. You know, it might be the same road, like the same like way, but instead of like just taking the road that you took the wrong turn on, you can't just go connect over here and go on the right road. You got to go back the way you came and then turn the right way and then go up. So there was a road that Richard had missed right before he got to the second checkpoint and the clutch was messed up. So he got to the dealer and the dealer said, I can't get you in for at least another two to four hours. And Richard was like, well, forget it. I'll just try to fix it myself. That's when he called his mechanic. So then he fixed his clutch. Richard did. He had fixed it. And then he thought the map didn't look right. So then he went back out and went back like I think it was 70 miles to make up for the turn that he took. So he had to backtrack the way he went and make it right. And then when he got back to the dealer, everybody was gone. So then he was able to get in to get his clutch fixed. So it was like a meant to be thing. I was so thankful because there's no way he could have done the mountains with no clutch. There would have been no way. My mom's doing good. Everything is doing good. She's still waiting on the guy to get the, um, the, um, the damage report or the estimate or whatever. He came out and got the damage report and stuff. So they were going to get back in contact with her. So in the meantime, she's still driving her truck. So it's still drivable. It's just doesn't look very good. But thank you for asking, Chris. Yep, she's doing good. I know. Me too, Arliss. I'm so thankful he's home. Yeah, he is a true warrior. Most definitely. And it's not a race. It's not, you know, like who can get to the finish line the first. It's not like you're winning an award anyway. It's just like it's an endurance ride. So it's it's you're getting in your head and, you know, finishing the ride. It's not like, um, oh, I got to go 100 miles an hour and get to the finish line and get first. I mean, there's people that are like that, but it's not supposed to be like that. So, and it, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of yourself fighting yourself on the ride because Richard said there was a lot of times he wanted to just come home. He was tired. He was like, why am I out here? And then on the first night, his radio went out on his bike. So he didn't even have no music to listen to or podcast or nothing because when you're out on the road for that long, I mean, you'd at least hope you'd have a radio to listen to music and stuff, you know, to distract you. Poor guy. He didn't even have a radio. Felt so bad. <laughs> but it is definitely his last hokey. He's going to hang up the vest and he's done with it. So he's done it five years and he's finished all five years. He's done really, really good. The next ride is going to be from, I think, um, Key West to, to Homer, Alaska again. So Richard thought he was wanting to do it again, but he's not. So he's done with that. He's just going to do like little rides around the house and stuff. So no more Hoka Hayes. He's done. Well, you know what it is? It's like 
um, not only do you have to pay the registration, but you're going to, you have to pay for your own gas. And, you know, Richard is still working. A lot of these guys are retired. So Richard is still working. So he had to take off work. So he's out money from his job from working. And then when he gets home, he's got to repair his bike. So it's not like he's ahead anywhere. I mean, you know, he's out money, a lot of money. Like I'd say probably $5,000 he's out just for doing the hokey. Hay. So and that's, you know, time off work, the registration to do it. And then, you know, the gas money and then the repairs for the bike. Because the bike is really in need of a lot of repairs this time. Uh, yeah, just like the, yeah. And that's funny too you say that, Michelle, because it's not like he's doing these roads on the highway. It's all back roads, twisties. I mean, he's seen buffalo, he's seen deer, he's seen um, uh, elk. Uh, one guy, I think, hit a deer. Richard hit a deer one year. He had to kick him out. His, his um, antlers got caught up in his crossbar, I guess. And then Richard did hit a little deer, but it was a baby fawn, I guess. Richard said... He doesn't think he got hurt, but he just like kind of slid on the side of the road. But um, he kept going back and forth in the road. And Richard, you know, it was late at night. And yeah, you know, things happen. Oh, yeah. Happy mail. Thank you. Who said that? <laughs> Debbie, thank you. Let me get my happy mail. Yeah, and then we'll let you guys go. Happy mail. Oh, I got the, um, the Kleenex box from... Uh, from Deborah, she sent me the template so i'm gonna hopefully make that with you guys next week i'm not making any promises though but i'm gonna try to all right remember she sent me the this tissue box here remember this from last week i think it was last week i showed you guys this she sent me the template yesterday i got it so we're gonna hopefully make that so you guys want to tune in next week this is going to go on to, let me see, this goes like this. Yeah. So the Kleenex box, remember? I didn't even put it together. So she gave me the template. I'm going to kind of use that and that. And then we'll hopefully make that next week, all right? Stay tuned. I'm hoping. I got the card here. Hold on. All right. So... I got two cards from Rebecca, my downline. Rebecca, your cards are so cute. I love it. And she's saying, thank you for the festive pearls. They will be perfect with my holiday cards. So cute. Very cute. Love the colors. Purple. All the cards are purple this week. <laughs> Rebecca knows I like purple. So then she sent me this card. She got the glossy dots for the glitter spinner for my team on Thursdays. We do lives on Thursdays with my team. And then that one's from Rebecca. And then this one I got from Sue. And she's so cute. She wrote me a note. And she said, don't mind the spider paper. She said, but that was purple and I wanted it to match the card. <laughs> You're so cute, Sue. Thank you. But look how cute. I have a video on this kind of card, but she used the chickens. My favorite chicken. Isn't that cute? I think I call this card the... Uh, what did I call this card? Flip-flop or something? Isn't it cute? So she, this is her note here. Please excuse the spider envelope. It was the only purple paper I had to make the envelope. So you can see here the spiders on it. <laughs> it's cute. I like it. I get it. You wanted to use the purple to match the card. See how it matches the card? It's very cute. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Rebecca. I love it. So cute. All right. Do you guys have any other questions? Remember, you're going to go to my website tomorrow. Let me get my stamps here. Hold on. Everything's over here on the side. Yeah, go to my website tomorrow and leave a comment on my blog post, Two for Thursday. Be posted about 7 o'clock in the morning, all right? Leave a comment, and you can win one of these stamp sets for next week, and I'll announce your name live in the glitter pit, all right? 
All right, one more shout out for all the winners. So we have Sharon won the pool party blends. I got your address, Sharon. Debbie, I got your address. You won the in color jewels. And then Kathy Swenson, you won the sequins, which I'm going to take these out of the package, so don't be surprised. And then you won the, I don't even know how to pronounce your name, I'm so sorry. But you won the card, the Tahitian Tide card. Remember, you're going to email me at dawn at the glitter pit dot com, right? Okay, so congratulations to all the winners. Yay. All right, so now I will see you guys. Oh, no, no Griffey pictures. I don't get to see Griffey anymore. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Sorry. So I'm not getting it. I'm not going to get into it online here, but yeah, I just, I don't have any new Griffey pictures. I'm sorry. I know, I'm sad too. All right, so I will see you guys next Wednesday. Same glitter time, same glitter station. I love you guys. Thanks for being so faithful. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up if you like today's video. Don't forget to share it too. Okay, I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.